what we've done so far is go from the real number set. We've got our natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational, and irrational numbers. What we're going to do is move over to the exponents. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to learn, take everything that we learned in the real number set and move over to the exponents. We've already talked about the subsections in the exponents. Now what we're going to do is bring over addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and see how the operations in the rational number set apply to the exponents. Now, obviously, well, actually not obviously. Sometimes it's easier to do multiplication, division. Sometimes it's easier to do subtraction, addition. Right now, what we're going to talk about, we're going to deal with subtraction, addition is basically the same thing. We're going to group those things together. And we're going to group multiplication and division together. Multiplication and division, the way it works is the base has to be the same. That's all you need. The exponent can be anything. You, anything. So as long as the base is the same, if you're multiplying or dividing, let's call this division or multiplication, as long as the base is the same, the exponents can be anything. Okay, so let's call anything, this is a pink box, and that's a blue box, okay? They don't have to be identical, unlike adding and subtracting. So the way it works is, if you had A squared times A cubed, the rule for multiplying and dividing exponents is, if you're multiplying, you add the exponents. If you're dividing them, you subtract the exponents. So this is multiplication. The bases are identical, so you're okay there. That means the exponents can add. So two plus three. So this becomes a two plus three, which is five. So this just becomes a to the power of five. And that's your answer. Right? So when it comes to multiplication and division, the bases have to be the same, the exponents can be anything. Let's do a few, right? So if you're multiplying two things that the base is the same, the exponent's different, uh, well, the exponents could be the same or different, you just add the exponents. If you're dividing two things that the base is the same, you subtract the exponents. So let's do, let's do an example. Okay? So right now we got 100, 120 a to the negative 2 b cubed divided by 40 a to the negative 5 b to the 5. Now what we do with the exponents, their bases are the same. The numbers, the coefficients in front, um, I think the numbers in front are just called coefficients. The numbers in front, they just deal, deal together exactly the way they did in uh, the real number set, right? So when we're talking about the first way, it's just adding or subtracting, multiplying, dividing numbers. So 120 divided by 40 is going to be 30. a to the negative 2 divided by a to the negative 5, what you do with division, you subtract the exponent. So it becomes negative 2 minus negative 5. So this becomes a negative 2 minus negative 5. And you do the same thing with the b because the base is the same. So it becomes 3 minus 5. So b, 3 minus 5. So we talked about this before, and negative and negative becomes a positive, so this becomes plus. So this becomes 30, a to the power of negative 2 plus 5 is 3, b to the power of 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Right? And we talked about what negative powers mean when we're laying out all the, the tra transition or moving on from the ra uh, rational number set to the exponents, and we set negative numbers, all it does is just kicks it down, right? If it's on the top, it goes to the bottom, bottom, it goes to the top. So the way this works is, now this negative two only applies to the B, it doesn't apply to the A or the 30, because these guys are in brackets to the negative, right? So the way it works is, go down here, no, okay. yes, yes. so this becomes 30. A cubed, that stays on top, over b squared. And that's our answer, okay? So 
that whole thing just reduces down to 30 a cubed v squared. So if you have something like this, a to the power of a half times a to the power of 5 over 3, what you've got to do, you've got to add the exponents. So this becomes a to the power of a half plus 5 over 3. And the way you add these is, well, you go a, you've got to find a common denominator, common denominator of 2, 2, and 3 is 6. You multiply this by 3, so you multiply that by 3, so it becomes 3 plus. You multiply that by 2, 3 by 2 gives you 6, 2, so it becomes 10. So this thing multiplied together is going to be a to the power of 13 over 6. All you do is you add the exponents. And it doesn't make a difference how many different symbols, variables you have multiplying together and dividing together. So for example, you could have So we have 2 to the power of 5, a squared, b to the negative 2, times 2 to the negative 3, a to the negative 5, b to the 5. And the way it works is, all the bases, they're the same. Even if you had, let's say you had a w. Okay. We don't have a w here, but that's okay. Because all you do, you put w to the power of 0, but that's going a little too far, too far to step. So all you do is you deal with the exponents, okay? So 2 to the, two to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of negative 3, all you do is just add the exponents. 5 plus negative 3 is going to be 2. So it's 2 squared. A squared times a to the negative 5. 5 plus negative 5 is going to be a to the negative 3. Negative 2 plus 5 is going to be 3, right? So it's going to be b to the power of 3. And your w is just your w, it's just so. Now what's the final answer for this? Well, 2 squared is just going to be 4. 2 times 2, you're quoting itself. So it's going to be 4. a to the negative 3, we talked about this in the layout of the exponents when we're transferring over the information from the rational number set to the exponents, or laying down the properties of exponents. A negative power means you flip it, right? And the only thing that flips here is the a, because that's the only one to the negative power. Now, if it was negative 3 to this whole thing, to, uh, this whole thing to the negative power, the whole thing would have flipped. But the negative 3 right now only applies to the a. So this becomes divided by a to the power of 3. You got b cubed and w on top. Okay. And that's your final answer. So when you're multiplying, dividing, bases with exponents, uh, that are the same, you just add or subtract the exponents depending on if you're multiplying or uh, dividing. Now let's do a little bit more complicated exponent to a fraction. Let's assume you had times power negative three or two five over seven. Okay. Complicated enough? Sure. The way this works is this is just multiplication. So anything that has the same base, you can combine their exponents. So this is multiplication, so it becomes a squared times a negative 3 over 2, so you're just adding those guys. And for the b, you're just adding those guys because it's still multiplication, right? So this would be a 2 plus negative 3 over 2, b a half plus 5 over 7. Now, the way you do this, you've got to do your uh, common denominator. The common denominator, that's just over 1. The common denominator here is 2. So this would be a to the power of, well, the common denominator is 2. You multiply the 1 by 2, so that becomes 4. And that stayed the same, so that stays the same, minus 3. The b becomes... The common denominator between 2 and 7 is 14. Multiply this by 7, so that becomes 7. Plus, multiply that by 2, so that becomes 10. So 
So we got this, this. 4 minus 3 is 1, so this becomes 8 to the power of a half. Right? And for the B, it's 7 plus 10 is 17. So it's B to the power of 17 over 14. Still on? 17. Does that make sense? Hopefully.